tight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. By BlackRifleCoffee.com. What are you snacking on there, Jabes? What? What are you snacking on? I'm not snacking. Who snacks? You're a snacker. I'm a snacker. You are a snacker. What, what do you have there? It's always some form of trail mix. Yeah. I, I feel like. You belong in an REI, you know, just <laughs> suiting up. Like, I feel like you rock climb inside an REI. You know I'm from Ojai. And like deep I down, get it. deep down, I really am. Yeah. And everything else is a facade, you know? <laughs> what do you have there? Show the audience what you have. Whatever, I have a show. wholesome medley. <laughs> It's always like, what, four kinds of nuts, maybe a chocolate, either an M&M or a I square. Don't, I don't usually do a chocolate. Uh, trail mixes with chocolate are candy bars. And right? don't be fucking fooled. Yeah. yeah. I usually do um, like a raw almond and then a dried fruit for sugar so that there's no added salt or sugar. Ah, that's nice. And this, uh, a treat yourself. Um, I got a little <laughs> hashtag treat yourself. <laughs> treat yourself. I got a little dark chocolate in there, which defeats the whole purpose. And again, don't be fooled. Right. If you have M and M's in your trail mix, you're eating M and M's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not going to cancel out the other. You know what I'm saying? No, of course, of course. Um, I think people are confused sometimes. I, I'm not confused. I'm not confused by this. I know exactly what I'm doing, which is nothing. <laughs> I So here's my my back history with trail mix and all that shit. Right? Oh, OK. Because I really want to get into this. Everybody's dieting right now. Yeah. Because you're look, it's right after the holidays. I get it. My gym is fucking packed. Still. Still. It should be dropping well, here, off. Yes. So here's the thing. It usually ends MLK day. Right. OK. Because everybody's like, oh, fuck it. I have the day off. They on, start on partying. Monday, everybody yeah. starts partying. And then, you know, NFL playoffs are on. Everybody's having parties, all that shit. Once you have that first party hangover yep. pizza the next day. Correct. It's over. 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 Right. Momentum gone. But the way the day shook out this year where holidays were in the middle of the weeks, everybody, it seems to me, pushed off their New Year's resolution of I'm going to go to the gym until the following week. So New Year's oh. Day fell on what? A Tuesday or a Wednesday yeah, this year? So it's like we're not going to start on a Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Week. So you're going to start the week after. So I feel like I probably still have another week to go before these fucking people drop off. Right. That being said, uh, last year when we were, you know, dieting after the, the, the fucking holidays. Dieting, you guys. After we were dieting after the holidays, you had this trail mix and it had some M&Ms and shit in it. And I was like, man, I don't think that when? this is helpful for weight loss whatsoever. And it, it wasn't. It, it's not. It tastes too good. So the deal with trail mix is this. If it tastes too good to be true, it is. You're, you're just eating a candy bar. That's a perfect assessment of, of it. That's a really good place to start for this big long conversation no, no. but, but um, if, if but there's no taste listen though if in it anything you're eating good then congratulations yes. you're gonna lose weight and that's with everything so trail mix <laughs> if you're having some kind of you know meat or something like that that tastes amazing yeah um there's probably too much salt there's probably too much fat you know what i mean fat's sure. not that bad but salt sugar carbs right so if it tastes good, it's not working. It's, it's probably not working. It's yeah. like if, it, if it's burning, it's working, right? Yeah. <laughs> if it tastes good, it's not working. How about that? Uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, I go to the gym. I have always, like regardless of diet or whatever, like I've always gone to the gym five, six days a week just because I, I write so much. I try to keep shit going. Otherwise, you have circulation problems, which I had back in the day where it was just like, man, I was gunning it. Um, yeah. single Ross gunning it, like really fucking pushing out, you know, seven scripts a year, something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. And 
the doctor was just like, hey, man, you, you've got to start doing uh, more cardio and more shit to strengthen just your legs walking. and everything Stretching, else. Stretching, walking. Yeah, yeah. It, normal shit. Whereas, you know, as a, as, a, as a guy's guy, as a man's man, as a real man with a set of oh, dick and boy. balls oh, boy. between his legs. Sure. I like to throw a little weight around in the gym. I like to feel like I'm really doing something, you know, mm-hmm. lifting heavy shit. Mm-hmm. Everybody looks like, oh man, you look so jacked. Because I, I like to, I like to lift weights. I like to to push my muscle around, if yeah. you will. I've gotten a couple messages. People are worried about me. Yeah, I would be. You know what I mean? Like, oh, are you eating? Like, <laughs> Jesse, scary thin, right? Lots of <laughs> lots of pictures like that. Don't worry, guys. Okay, I don't have a problem. You know. <laughs> Gosh, that is a dream of mine for just one person to talk about me behind my back and be like, she's scary thin. I I think she's going to die. Kind of worried about her. Yeah. She is wasting away. (laughs) Um, That has never happened. And I'm not sure if it will. I just don't have uh, the Eh, body type. Yeah, you do. You do. I'm an athlete. But anyways, uh, all of these athletes at my gym. Are still True there. Athlete. True True yeah. athletes uh-huh. and sucking up the fucking treadmills and all this other shit. And I'm like, right. God damn it, man. This is one of those things where, look, we live in a, a beautiful city. It'd be nice to go and run outside, walk outside, whatever. It's cold. Can't do it. It's fucking cold right now. It's beautiful, but uh, you only have about three or four months of uh, tolerable outside weather. That's not, where it's I, I don't not mind. super hot or it's not super cold. I don't mind and the super true. hot. I really don't. I don't mind the super hot. That's fine. The super cold is another problem where you're just like, man, I cannot do this. So, uh, I was at the treadmill, uh, yesterday. Right. And, uh, you know, I like to get on the ESPN one. I like to zone out, watch my shit, sure. not think about anything. Mm-hmm. And, Dude, this motherfucker was on there, man, I, who I, I've never seen before at the gym in my life. Been going to the same gym for, what, four years now? Sure. Six, eight, some goddamn Frankenstein type of man mm-hmm. uh, on there. And I was just like, just walking on like a two, just a oh. fucking two, just watching on ESPN. Phone, and I'm, on the thing, yeah, yeah. Yep. And I was like, man, I've got to go now to the other treadmill, which is in front of CNN. Mm-hmm. And... I look at this motherfucker sure, and I'm like, God, with disdain, because now I got to watch CNN. You can't ask him to turn it off. Oh, okay. You can't because it's, it's stapled into, there's like 80 TV stapled into the ceiling or whatever, duct taped. I, th- I think that's probably in. what they're doing. Yeah. A zip tie, whatever Mr. they're doing. Mr. Handy over here. Yeah, yeah. whatever they're doing. <laughs> and I catch this Roger Stone thing. Oh, yes. What a crock of shit is that? Like and now if I've got to watch this. If you're gonna arrest anyone, though, wouldn't it be him? Here, here's the thing. Oh, about he's it. the perfect villain. Uh, yeah, yes, it's great. I like it's it. great. It's, it's for it's, their story. For their story. Yeah, it's great theater. It's great comedy. the The issue I take with it is this, right? So you have an FBI raid that that goes down. And again, if you haven't seen Get Me Roger Stone on Netflix. Great, so great good. doc. He reminds me of one of those old school guys where you're just like, man, like a gay publicist where it's just he lived this crazy life. And you, know, and you don't know if any of it's true. Right. And you know he's <laughs> done some, you know, not yeah. on the level stuff yeah. to get his candidate, you know, where he needed to go. And I do believe he would take the fall for whatever he. I don't know about that. I don't see. No? A, I don't see a guy like that in jail, but. Just uh, saying, I don't think he would out anybody. Yeah, we'll find out. But. Uh, what, what I find fascinating about it on CNN is this. They were there. They were there at his house before the raid happened. CNN? CNN was there. And this reporter. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So he, they were there an hour before. So right when the raid happened, and it was, the, the raid happened at 6 a.m., right? Okay. Right when the raid happened. They had fucking live footage. They were live on CNN. They were the only news outlet there. They were the only people that knew. Mm. How do you know during an, an, a federal investigation? Because look, look, let's face it. If you're going to raid somebody's house, you got to do it in the middle of the night. And it's, it's like you see yeah, yeah. in the movies. Oh, yeah. And CNN knew. Mm. I, I feel like at this point, and, and here's like, I don't give a shit about Roger Stone or anything else. And like, frankly... After watching that doc, 
I, I find him as a an entertaining dude, like who just just had this weird, crazy life. Maybe, or maybe he hasn't. Maybe mm-hmm. some of this shit's in his mind. I don't sure. know. Either way, I, I like or either arrest Trump or get on with your fucking life. The takeaway I got from this was this has now just become theater, just uh, mm-hmm. entertainment at this point. Mm-hmm. And watching it on CNN was entertaining because you're watching a live FBI raid when you're oh. just like, holy shit. Raiding. But the only person that could tip you off is the FBI. Yep. That's it. Yep. No one else was there. And they didn't let Fox News know, huh? No. Why? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. Or, right. or, or any other. But here's the thing. Any other outlet, not even local, because this happened in, Fort, in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, right? Okay. No other news outlet except CNN was there. Not a local news channel, nothing, mm. nothing. It like not not even the what's that weird BBC fucking UK shit that they've always got the Sun or whatever it is. Oh yeah, yeah. We've always got the scoop on anything. No one else was there, but CNN, and they interviewed the reporter afterward who was live on the scene, you know. And they said, "How did you know, man? How did you know this was going to happen?" And he goes. Oh, man. And he's smiling the whole time, just just like this, like a fucking kid uh, who just shit his pants after eating all of his Halloween candy. Just, just like, like uh, swishing around in it. Yeah. Just really creaming out the side of his costume. He was just like, my, he goes, my reporter's instincts took over. And I just stopped. I thought it would happen. Mm. And they were like, what time did you show up? And he mm-hmm. said, well, I showed up at 5 a.m. Sure. Great. The raid was at six. So you just showed up magically at Instincts. five. Instincts kicked They're in. They're that good. And you had all your equipment ready and you were able to capture this live on TV. Sure. Man, that's amazing, isn't it's it? It's a beautiful story. <laughs> it's a beautiful story and it fits right in, doesn't it? So in thinking about all of this, right? All of it. Like we'll, we'll go back to, we'll go back to, Obama. I, I always go back to the Obamas in the back of carpool karaoke. Right. Okay. And doing him doing Jimmy Fallon. That's when we we stopped caring, I think, as a nation about whether or not we we are electing a president or an entertainer just to kind of keep us going as, as some type of story now. Right. Because mm-hmm. when I saw him, Obama and Fallon, I was like, man, that's weird. It's a fucking president. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I saw her on the back of car, the first lady on the back of car, carpool karaoke. Mm-hmm. Right. The next, the next logical step at that point is to elect a reality TV star as president. Yeah. Because that's all we really want is entertainment. At the end of the day, the way all of this is going, this has been going on for what? A year and a half now, this, this investigation about Russia and collusion. No one, besides these weird like outskirt people, like uh, what? His lawyer, Roger Stone, like mm-hmm. who cares? I Arrest Trump or get get the fuck on with it, right? Right. I don't think that like the Democratic side doesn't want it. Um, the Republicans are fucking sick of it, obviously, but it doesn't matter because it's entertainment. And for CNN, that like this is all entertainment now. Uh, Fox News is all entertainment. Like all of this is just simply entertainment and ratings at this point. Yeah. I don't think anyone cares. And I had an interesting conversation with Evan Hafer, one of my best friends, about this, about everything that's going on in America, right? I would love to hear his. He had a really interesting take on it, which is why I'm going to recycle it and tell you here. Because I'm not sure if we talked about it on the show at Drinking Bros or uh, just in real life. I, yeah. all, all of them blend together now at this point, you know, real life and fucking what we talk about on the podcast. It's true. I asked him, I said, hey, man, what do you, what, in your heart of hearts, what would what, what you hope happened or would happen with the American president in that office and everything else in government? And he said, nothing. I, would, I hope that it remains the same way as it is now forever for the rest of my life. And I said, why, why is that? Um, don't you want things to change or get better or whatever? And he goes, no. The longer it stays in a quagmire, the government, he goes, no matter who's in office, Mm-hmm. The longer, because look, we're on day, what, 35 or 36 of this government shutdown, all the shit. He goes, the more time that government is fighting with each other, the less time they're worried about me or looking at me or looking at taxes for businesses or other things or whatever. And he goes, I don't have to worry about shit. And he goes, now, if things actually started getting better or one side you know, started improving and started closing tax loopholes, for mm-hmm. example, or 
putting up a wall at the border and, and for border security and keeping all these other people out and trying, you know, all these states scrambling to try to deal with health care for immigration and all this other stuff. He goes, man, if that all cleaned up and everything was buttoned up, he goes, then they'd start examining U.S. businesses more harshly, looking for more taxes and looking for more real shit, looking for the things that they possibly can't get to now because they're stuck mm-hmm. in a quagmire with this other shit, this other stupid shit. And he goes, right. all of this. The government shutdown. Is a distraction. We need, I mean, that needs to end though. It does, I don't, but, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't either. Like being happy about that because people I, I, are Here's like, the thing. I, I'm not happy about a government yeah. shutdown and I'm not happy I, about I, it. I'm not, I'm, I'm them fighting over dumb stuff. I get that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, but, he, but here's the thing. The, Evan's not happy about a government shutdown. No. None of us are. No. But with with all of this that's going on, with the government shutdown in particular, like you're on day 35 of this. I know Obama had one over health care that was like 17 or 18 days or whatever. There is no give from the, de- like the Democratic side on this. They don't really want border security. They want open borders and all this other shit. I don't know when or how this ends. Um, but either way... Let's be clear. They don't want open borders. They just don't want to give the money. It's all, all, all about money. But for what? So what are you saving the money for is my question. I'm not sure, but they don't want to give him five, seven or five billion dollars. What, what, are, you, what are you going to do about border security is my question. Like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody's got to give on something. I, look, Obamacare got passed eventually. Yeah. Because it was like, all right, great. You want to try this? Let's give it a go. Turned out to be a fucking nightmare, but... It's it, it. You tried it, and it's better than nothing. He's the president. You respect the decision. Right. And move on. Like right. I, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. With this and border security and all that other shit, yeah. m- me personally, yes, I think a wall helps. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, a lot of it has to do with psychological. Where you're just like, oh shit, I can't get over that. It's kind of like walls at prisons. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I can't get over that. Fuck, I'm not, I'm not going to try to escape or get in. Right. You know, you want to take the time to dig a fucking five mile tunnel under, under the ground like El Chapo and those guys did. Go, fine. Escape at Danamora. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, good luck. Have fun. Have fun. All, all of it. That, you can spend years That's and years on people. that. Yeah. That's two people. That's two people of the thousands that are millions that are in jail. Don't care. Yeah. So how does this all end? Because look, the fighting on both sides, by the way, it's just pure entertainment for the news. Yeah fucking cycles that's it for the news channels fox and cnn and msnbc and like you know watching it every day but you know just being at the gym or whatever like and you get to see all the sides of it like they don't give a shit which way it goes i just really hate the the government shutdown same for this long it's it's encroaching on um cruel like really yeah cruel behavior and to where both sides are going to be the absolute enemy to, you know, we're, we're encroaching on a time where the people that voted for Trump are going to start getting pissed off at him yeah. about it. Oh yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Cause those are, you know, these are people that respect the government, right? Yeah. Respect that he's the president or whatever. So, um, that's going to be tough for him yeah. as well. So uh, there's no winner. God, what is, I, uh, uh, Whatever. Exactly. I don't know. No, no, no. But, I just but you're right. For so me, at just, the end of this, yeah, it's just all sad. I was thinking is who's the real winner at the end of all of this? The media. The media. That's it. Um, no matter what they end up deciding when they finally come together and decide something, there's going to be a, a lot, a lot of people that are going to not be able to get out of this hole. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. When you go into this kind of debt and you're not paying bills and you're not being able to like get ahead and you maybe you do get loans like that big that rich motherfucker saying, why don't they all just get some loans? Right. Right. I don't see why they can't just get a loan. So then some of them probably are. Yeah. And then you get into that kind of debt. Yeah. And, the you know, so I think the damage is going to be really, really high no matter what happens. Yeah. It's it, look. It's a fuck all right now. Um, so, and you know me, I usually don't care about this kind of stuff. No, not at but all. When people are like being forced to go into debt, like normal, just hardworking people that didn't do anything wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of shit really, really pisses me off. And no matter what 
again, no matter what, at this point, no matter what happens, so many people have already lost so much in my eyes. So right. it's just a, a big pile of shit. When, when I think about the scope of it, of all of it combined, right? To me, it proves that that DC really is a swamp. Like, and they don't care, they don't care. about you. They don't care about you. It, it, no don't matter what party you're in, don't elect somebody. <laughs> whatever yeah, party you're in, whatever party, they do, never, do not care about you. Don't elect somebody on them on you thinking that they're gonna give a shit about you. Yeah, really look at the issues. Really look at what they're actually going to do. Do, don't don't go off whether you like them or whether you feel like they're going to take care of you because they won't. Crazy. In the end, yeah, they won't. And you know, he promised a wall. Well, guess what? This is the cost of it. Yeah. So if you were really into that happening, or you weren't into that happening, either way, you're losing. And at the end of it, if anyone is like, "Yes," I'm going to be pissed. I don't think anybody is. I don't think anybody is, think if, is yes, you know? I don't know. At the end, it really feels like who's going to win, doesn't it? Either side. But that's always how it's been. Right. But so, someone's going to win. So some side, whichever right. it is, is going to be like, yes. You know, either we didn't get, we blocked the wall or we got it. Right. Someone's going to be excited about it. And that also is going to make me pissed. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all these people. Because it's already just a fucking piece of shit yeah agreed agreed and uh when we were going through uh tsa last time i, I actually i was um on that flight to uh casey it was mm -hmm. the first time i was just like hey do what you gotta do yep grab the dick took the laptop lab laptop out good for you yeah yeah i like that uh the anger like subsided that. and i said hey man i feel i feel bad for these people and uh yeah i'm, I'm gonna let this one go I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let, I Give got my a little thrill. If the they want to grab the dick. I got it. And I got to grab to and fro again. There you go. Yeah. And I just and said, you said, I, have it. I did. I said, take this dick. You said, have at it. Take this dick. Sure. Do with it what you know will, that... but use both hands. Okay. Use both hands. Okay. That sounds degrading. Yeah. No, it wasn't. So, no. I was letting them know like, Hey, right. The, have fun with it. That's not a concealed weapon down there. Sure. That's you a, were having, that's, you a were, that's a therapy snake. You were having fun with them. That's huh? a therapy snake for the plane. Oh god. <laughs> Speaking they're of which, like they're like, Ross, can you go back to um not taking your laptop about <laughs> and getting pissed off at us? We really like that a lot better than this creepy grab my snake version. Oh man. I look, I, I joke about the snake, but we're getting there, by the way. We're getting there as people. Um, there was a guy in Pennsylvania who, uh, who has an emotional support alligator. Yep. You saw that? No. Yeah. Just makes sense. This is in the AP press. This isn't in like one of your weird sites like 8shit.com or World News or you know, I don't Bat do Boy. World News Daily anymore. Anymore, but you used to. I used to because it's <laughs> funny and fun, but you don't like me to have fun. No, I don't. There's a, there's a, there's a 65-year-old man that is registered an emotional support animal named Wally um, that he likes to snuggle and give hugs to. Turns out Wally's a five foot fucking alligator. Five foot, I thought pygmy. Yeah. I thought, yeah. No. That five would five be foot long. Therapeutic. Five foot long. He said he received approval from his doctor to use Wally as a, his emotional support animal. Yeah, I got a after... weed card from my doctor too. <laughs> After not wanting to go on medication for depression. Sure. <laughs> sure. And I condone that, by the way. So Wally was rescued outside of Orlando at 14 months old and is still growing. Jesus Christ. The, the, the animal shelter says that this thing could grow up to be 16 feet long one day. Oh, God. Uh, he says Wally eats chicken wings. Eh, it's a nice thing. Obviously. Sundays. Wally eats whatever on. you fucking give him, you <laughs> idiot. He loves wings. Um, it says he shares an indoor plastic pond with a smaller rescue alligator named Scrappy. Where does one get a rescue alligator? Can you just go and say, hey, I want to rescue this alligator? I'm there's sure a lot of alligators in Florida. Yeah, I'm sure there's a, you know, just like with any other animal. 
<laughs> Here's the There's thing. There's like rescue horses that they have to rescue or like things that they're being like neglected or right. not treated well or whatever. And they have to take them to a. This is in the AP press, by the way. So this is like the most, you know, basic, normal, reputable there is. Um, he did acknowledge that Wally is still a dangerous wild animal and could probably tear his arm off, he says. Cool, but that's part of it. He's never been afraid of him. Do you think that is part of it? Of, of hey, that would I'm know, living on the edge. Yeah, with this would alligator. cut through the boredom, which sometimes a lot of uh, <laughs> these I have depression, but not real depression, <laughs> is that you're bored and that life is not a bi- a big fucking thrill ride anymore like it used to be. Uh, and so, yeah, I do feel I do feel like that would you know as long as you're kept on your toes. Yeah, you don't you don't have time to think about whether you're depressed or not. And believe I'm this is different than real depression, by the way. I'm not saying, sure, sure, sure. Not saying anything about that. I'm saying the uh, you know, the people that think they have depression and they don't. Yeah, they're bored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of those on planes, you know, in particular, uh, just weird women with like cats. And you're like, man, you're not depressed. That's not a support animal. Yeah, no. You know, you just want to. People need a uh, special attention. So they love to be like, this is my special. I, I'm not allowed to have gluten. So I am special. Right. I saw I a woman. need a cat. I need your special attention. There was a woman on the flight to Kansas City. It was definitely not flying in for the AFC championship. Sure. She had this huge fucking cat in this thing that went underneath the seat. And I was just like, man, dude, are you serious? Yeah. 100%. I'm pretty allergic to long-haired cats. Was it like... Same. It was a fucking long-haired cat, but, you know, I Did wasn't you... sitting next to her. Oh, okay. She was in the row. If you had She was in the though. row. So I was on the, on the right. She was in the row to the left of me, and I was like, man, I, like, what if you were somebody like me sitting there? That's what I... That's what I mean. It's very... It's selfish, and I'm special, and it's just... Fucking retarded. Yeah, I did sit next to a weird guy on the plane, though, who was super weird, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, this, this flight back, there was a bunch of snowstorms in the east. Some flights were canceled, all this shit. And they were like, hey, we're just going to get you on this flight. It doesn't matter where you're at. And I was like, no, I just want to go home. No right. big deal, right? right. And I knew, I knew weather-wise what was happening across the eastern part of the nation, you know, a bunch of snowstorms and all that shit. And uh, I was in, they were like, we'll, we'll put you in an, a, you know, an exit row in a middle seat or whatever, right? And I was like, that, that's fine. Um, I'm in a middle seat. The guy who gets in before me, big guy, mm-hmm. probably 6'4". Okay. Uh, two, 240, 250, somewhere in there. All right. I sit down, like he's, he's on the, the wing, closest to the wing, right? Okay. I'm in the middle, big guy. You know, six three, sure, 225 of pure chocolate, whatever, right? Yeah, a couple of one two, yeah, big, a couple big of boys. one twos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this little guy sits, sits next to me, um, kind of, kind of dressed like a cowboy, a little sure. cowboy. He, he had his uh, little flannel tucked into the jeans, you know, okay, okay. Little, he was dressed like a little cowboy, sure. He was going to Kansas City, and he goes, uh, he sits down, he's just like, oh. Man, don't you hate when they put three big guys next to each other? And I was like, and he's like super he's little. little. So it was probably Aww. five eight, five nine, and I was just like. So, anyways, I kind of laughed, kind of laughed it off, right? Kind of laughed it off, let it go. Didn't didn't say anything. Didn't want to poke the bear, you know. Didn't want to kick anybody while they were down. Yeah, precious. yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know what this guy's deal was. Uh, it, it appeared cause like he was, any, when anybody's furiously texting, I always peek over, you know, yeah, take like a little, what a little, little, little on. peek sees at the screen sure. and it, it appeared he was going through a breakup with this girl, you know? Mm. And cause he was just like, all of these problems I should have known before I started, started up with you or whatever. And, it was and this is before you guys were taking off. Before we even took off. Oh, right? and he kept then, then it's going to end and it's going to end on some kind of yes. fight. Yes. Fighting words. But, but he kept looking around like, Ugh, Ugh. stretching out like, <laughs> uh, uh, like he was boxing, like he was caged, you know, yeah, like he yeah, was with these yeah. two huge people and he was huge. Yeah. And it was like, bro, you are not that big. And right. The flight takes off and he's mid. You ever, oh. you ever been mid text right when the flight takes off and you want to either say I love you or something horrible to somebody and then you're like flight takes off. Sure. You know, I got, I got my point across. Fuck you. I haven't, but sure. Or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? I have during an email where it's just like, hey, man, 
fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Have. During an email where it's just like, oh, man, if I can just click send. Right. Um, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, but in an email, you've go, go in, fly it. Fucking hate it. Don't want to use it. Don't really care to, work. to be honest with yeah. you. No, it doesn't matter. Usually right on flights. So anyways, flights takes off. And but he was mid, he couldn't get this last oh, text out oh, to this girl. Oh. So this whole flight, uh, it, was, it was a short flight, maybe an hour, 40 minutes, hour and a half. He was just. Long uh, enough. Long uh, enough. Uh, hemming and hawing, looking around, just flexing, you know, just like, uh, Did try, he trying to do everything he Did you to ask him maybe? At one, no. So okay. at, at one point, like. Cause he was kind of like flexing, like, and it was getting into my thing. And I was like, Hey man, something going on. We, we good or, or what? And he was just like, Oh, what do you mean? And I was like, do you have ADD? Are you, are you restless? Like what's the story here? Because you're, did you say this to him? I did. And he was like, cause he's coming into my area at this point. I'm just trying to sleep. Sure. I, like, sure, I, I don't sure, really sure. give a fuck yeah, at like, this point. What's up? What's up? Yeah. 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 What, what's up? And he's like, Oh man, I just, uh, the claustrophobic, you know, I'm so cramped, you know, just three big dudes. And I was like, finally, I just asked him, I just said, Hey, what, what, what do you classify as a big dude? Like in your mind, what, 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 what is it? You know? And he was just like, ah, oh, you know, uh, broad shoulders. He goes, it, 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 dead serious. He goes, they should, they should measure people. Ask for your measurement to get on a plane of your coat size. You know, I mean, if you're bigger than a, a, a 42, you know, a chest they shouldn't put three people side by side like this and i was like and i looked over you know when when somebody's legs are so small my my knees if i'm in coach are up against the seat no matter what right. like this guy had an easy foot between his knee sure, and the seat sure. you know he was comfy cozy comfy cozy right I, and i don't even know if his legs touched the i think there might have been an inch oh, where he could kick swinging, yeah a where he could kick his little legs there, yeah. where he could kick his little fucking legs right right and i go I was like, just out of curiosity, you know, I was like, how tall are you? And I was, he was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm right around six feet. Mm-hmm. And I go, and what in America or is that, or is that overseas? So we, cause are we measuring in a different thing or whatever? And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, ah, I'm six, three. And like, I, I am a whole head taller than him in the seat, you know? Right. And I was like, I'm a lot bigger than you. And he goes, oh man, you're probably taller than you think. And I was like. Oddly enough, I just went through this on another podcast with my friends about a buddy who had forgot his own height, Jared Taylor. Oh, yeah. Forgot his own height live on air. It Didn't changes. Know. Yeah. It never changes. changes. You know how small or big you are. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I finally, I finally was just like, man, you don't seem that big. Like, you're certainly is not, not as big as the two of us, obviously. And I was just like, uh, so I'll tell you what, once you pick a position, and then I'll maneuver myself around you since you're so big, you know? And that really shrunk him down to size. Because I was like, I'll put the little tray down. Like, whatever you need because you're so big, I will, sh- I will shrink myself to whatever size that needs so you can be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just because I wanted that in his mind forever at this point of... Let's not walk around, you know, because you, you got cowboy boots on and a little flannel tucked in that you're a, you're a real life cowboy 5'8". You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, so he had to sit and live with that. And he was just like, oh, uh, uh, I, I mean, I, I guess I could have the armrest or whatever. And I was like, great. Because that, that way you, mo- you won't be restless. I want you to relax on this flight. Seem, you, you seem pretty tense. Like you've had a rough go of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he kind of just like grabbed his phone and kind of, you know, put it away. Like mm-hmm. I had seen you in Texas, you know what I'm saying? Right. I didn't go there. I didn't say that. That was it, like, if he was going to get wild with it, I would have been like, Hey man, I read what you were going back and forth with over your ex-girlfriend. And I'm going to be honest with all your movements and rustling around on the plane. I can probably see why she broke up with you. Right. I can probably see why she's not there anymore. I can probably see why she might need an emotional support alligator. Right. You Someday. didn't say that. Didn't. Because at that I point, I that. forced him into a position. Sure. And, uh, and then, you know, the rest of the, the hour and 20 minutes was, uh, was fine. But, yeah. Whenever you get a guy with little man's complex, mm-hmm. oof, the, I mean, just the worst. You really got to put him in there. Place. the worst no I, I just wanted to be comfortable scary. it's scary to see people getting that uncomfortable fidgety yes yeah, same here same there's always that's one, why i did it by the way yeah there's always one or two i'm sometimes sitting by them sometimes not but i they always catch my eye because i'm like that's the person that's gonna have a complete freak out yeah, yeah um because they're just like 
either so stressed about what's happening or they're claustrophobic or they we've been sitting on the tarmac for too long and they're going to have some kind of outbreak. So those people always kind of freak me out a little bit. Yeah. And actually, maybe it would be nice to just kind of be like, hey, man, like, I see you. I see what's going on. Are you OK? Yeah. Do we need to take the Xanax and, or like, and that's what it, that's what it was as a person where it was just like, hey, drink. yeah, and and if you kind of force somebody into a situation of like, hey, how how are how are we going to make you comfortable? You know what right. I'm saying? Because it disarms them. I think people walk through life these days not talking to one another, right? Or or everybody's afraid of confrontation. Is that or that's the biggest? Looking at each other, yeah. Yeah, and for me personally, like you know, when you're in in the air like that, if you have one freak out, I mean, dude, it, it's you could take down a fucking plane or whatever it is, you know, or b- worse in my eyes. You know what's worse than trying to take down a plane? What? Being rerouted back to the place you just came from. Absolutely. <laughs> like you'd be that. like, we've got to land right here. Exactly. Don't want to do that. Wherever. Um, yeah. Uh, I feel shitty that I have a lot of airport stories, but I spend so much goddamn time in these things. And I'm like, man, it is. It, it, it feels like you're in a cubicle of some sort or whatever, where you're just like, all right, I'm going to see the same people. Well, you just know you're going to be waterboarded. You know it's going to take (laughs) you to the brink (laughs) of what you can handle as a human, depending on what your level is. Yeah. So I know that as a pretty calm, like nothing really phases me that much person, I'm taken to the edge where I realize how people can freak out. I see it. I'm not going to do it. But I go, oh, this is this is how it happens. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those people that are sitting on the um, tarmac for 16 hours in the freezing cold. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that kind of thing where you're like, how did, how wasn't there an incident on that plane of someone stabbing, like yeah. freaking out, yeah. like having a heart attack, something, because it's so insane and you just know it. So the anxiety starts as you're driving to the airport because you just go, what the fuck's going to go wrong? Mm, What's going to happen? Forgot to tell you. Something. So on the second flight, which is a puddle jumper, that Charlotte to Wilmington flight, mm-hmm. there was a, the guy had a heart attack on the flight. Really? Yeah. And uh, when, when, when we, was when it we like, landed. Was it like, is there a doctor on yes. this? I love that. Yeah. You never get to hear that anymore. You're just like, is there a doctor on and board? And then he like gets up Correct. and helps him. Yep. So it, 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 was it. In the, it was in the back and uh, those flights are small. But with that, you know, on a 40 minute flight, and we were probably 20 minutes into it. You couldn't. So we had to land. But it was interesting when we landed. Um, there was an ambulance waiting there. Okay. So they said, hey, if everybody could remain seated, we're going to help this Obviously. gentleman out. And, uh, you know, they, they took him off. Paramedics rushed on board, took him off. And then everybody got off in a in a relatively quickly manner where I was just like, wow, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but it was one of those. Yeah, is there a doctor in the house? You never hear that anymore. You never hear it anymore. You know what else? Like, I and part of me felt jealous too that I wasn't the doctor. Right. You want to be that guy yeah. where you're like, is there oh, any shit. podcast hosts in the thing? It's like, <laughs> yes, right. That's never gonna happen. I can talk to them about their oh, life. Oh, do they need? Do they need to be entertained? <laughs> I've got it. Right? No, we're never gonna be called up. Do you know what I mean? And that's a sad thought. Yeah, yeah. Because there's always one part of you that's like, man, I like I, I took CPR as a kid. I could probably go yeah. help this guy out and so well, you hey, know and be the hero that everyone if deserves. Nobody, if there's for some reason no doctor yeah. or nurse on. <laughs> You would be the next, I think, in line, right? I think so. Podca- Dr. Yeah, podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Writer, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, director. Author, yeah. yeah like, I, Author, I, director. The, who's the actor from yeah. all those movies? Yeah, is there any actors? Is that, because can he pretend to be a doctor until yeah. we get there? <laughs> yeah, just calm him down, pretend you are. Yeah, yeah. there was a twins of, je- of jealousy when the guy got up and sprinted yeah. to the back, oh. and I was just like, ah, oh, fuck. I love it. He's a better I human than the rest of us. Because mm-hmm. that goes through your mind where you're like, no matter what I do in this life, let's say this 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 next book comes out, reaches number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Sure. I didn't save that guy's life on no. the plane. And you never will be called up to do so. <laughs> Isn't that sad? How, I still hold crazy, out hope. What a crazy I thought. I still hold out hope, James. You could do it. You, know? you run in front of the guy. Push the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they need like, another hey. doctor for Oh, him. you wanted another doctor. I'm sorry. I Now we need a doctor for this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm heading. I'm sorry. And then you have to make up a lie. I'm sorry. I'm a podiatrist. Different type of doctor. I yeah. didn't know if he had a foot condition. Yeah. That, uh, I didn't know if he, had, he cramped up or yeah. had a bunion issue that I could uh, possibly put a splint on or something. Right. 
Right. Sorry, wrong doctor. They're a hairstylist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she needs to get to her shoot or something. She yeah. needs the blowout. We need. Yeah. That yeah. may happen. That's, uh... And that has happened. I've actually been called to action <laughs> at a wedding because the, the, the hairstylist did not show up. Really? So, boom. Is there a hairstylist in the house? Yeah. You were there. I was there. Didn't feel the same. It will, Jealousy it will never feel the same. Jealousy over the doctor, though. Yeah, but listen. You know, we all want to be... We all want to help. We, we all want to be, be heroes. the hero. We do. I just, um, I just wasn't. I wasn't a hero. Yeah, and Fuck, again, man. you I, never will be. We've been rambling on again and not gotten to the sponsors again. Oh, my gosh. I know. Well... Who cares? It's a very long time. Eh, whatever. It's we, we do what we want here, Jabes. We're, we're our own people. It, it, look, it's worth more money in the middle of the show. So fuck and it. If you don't have a doctor in the house, yeah, Black Rifle, will Black work. Rifle Coffee will be your doctor. That'll jumpstart your heart in the morning. I'm better. BlackRifleCoffee.com. I, th- dude. After I said it on the last show, everybody went to the website to buy the Woobies. Fuck, man. They're out, right? They must be. No, I. Don't I, I? I think they ordered a fuck ton because they knew. Okay, smart. Yeah, they are um, smart over there. Yeah, I, I they ordered a bunch because they knew. I think everybody was waiting for this fucking thing. Sure. I, and I saw someone who had it overnighted to them. That's how much they wanted it. So they sent me a picture this morning of like, hey man, you talked about that two days ago. I was like, how the fuck do you have this now? Got overnighted to them. Boom. And I was just like, wow, it's that great though. I was just like, shit. It just looks so cool. I know. They're cool. Their whole company's cool. I know. Big fans. I Like, how much can you go on about Black Rifle Coffee? The Coffee Club of the Month program is where it's at. It's an email that comes to you uh, once a month along with the subscription of the month. But the email, man, is where it's at. Because you get in on all this other sh- cool shit before anybody else is. I don't. Did I tell you they were giving away? Like, they give away, like, one gigantic gift every year. Um, like a, a safe. They give away a $5,000 Liberty oh, yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two months in a row they did that. And I was like, Jesus Christ, we do some cool shit in drinking bros sports. Um, if you're on Facebook, join that too. We're giving away a William refrigerator Perry Jersey that you won in fantasy football. Cause you were the champion. You were donating that for whoever's picking go. the Super Bowl winner <laughs> and all that stuff. But look, we do a lot of that stuff on drinking bros. We do a lot of that stuff on Ross Patterson revolution, especially if you follow the Facebook page and, and all of that stuff. We do giveaways all the time for signed books and hats and gear and all that stuff. And we also give away a lot of black rifle coffee. Um, so go to black rifle and uh, peruse their entire catalog. Let us know if there's something you want us to give away on the show. And we'll do, we'll do that too for some, some type of deal. Cause we're, we're, we're down to do that all the time. We love those guys. Uh, we just gave some of the Wilmington fire department. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, man, it's just the best coffee there is. Great dudes. BlackRifleCoffee.com, promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off, one-time use. Next up, we got GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. I am super excited to get to this today. Um, I, I said on the last show, I was like, man, the deals, some of the deals that it had expired for uh, New Year's, you know? And I was like, man, I, look, you got to get in on these deals when you get on these deals. And they were like, hey, man, we were going through your analytics and, uh, and all, all your shit for the podcast. And, you know, we, we realized there's a lot of military and first responders uh, who listen to the show. So what we're doing now is giving you. So if you go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, we're giving all military, uh, either vets or, you know, currently serving uh, and all first responders, either currently serving or, or retired, uh, 15% off mattress with all the deals and all of that shit like Do that's it. a big big fucking saving so if you're a military or first responder out there i don't know another company that's doing this um Mm-mm. when i got and i got this email last night at like midnight from them so like clearly they, they had been had, up thinking about yeah. it and trying to come up with with cool new giveaways and things like that and it's like man i I, the guy's name is Rich. I'll give him a shout out, man, because I, I got this this email super late last night. And um, to do things like this, like when when you really think about it, because let's face it, who needs a mattress more than military or first responders? To be honest with you, I mean, they're doing the hardest jobs on the planet. It's usually manual. Yeah. I mean, not manual, but uh, you're on your feet all day, all that other shit. And it's just like, man. All night shifts, things yes. like that. Yes. First responders anyway. Yeah. So you want a good night's sleep, man. I, I just thought, me personally, um, that was one of the, the best gestures I've ever seen from you know a sponsor or anything like that. Like, I mean, shit, you're losing a lot of money by doing that yeah. um, off the mattress. I mean, for real. Yeah, like, yeah. Fuck, that's a 
probably an extra what 150 off the fucking mattress like that's amazing that takes it down quite a bit it's amazing man but that's what this company is and we've been with them forever oh, man on drinking bros and uh and now ross patterson revolution and uh they're just fucking rad man go to their website if you need a new mattress go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros especially if you're military or, or first responder and again it'll just be a little footer at the bottom of the page um and uh, you just click it on you get an extra 15 percent. so it's not like you have to scan some weird id or anything to you know it's an honor code system, and and that's that's amazing. Hey, man. listen, if you're gonna lie, I, exactly. Then yeah, and <laughs> you're a horrible person. But you know the ghost bed's so good, you may be able to sleep at night. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it is. It's great. So even little liars can sleep. <laughs> it's great. So I, look, man, I, I just want to give Rich and those guys a shout out over there at Ghost Bed because uh, that was really, really fucking cool. And again, when you get an email at midnight, you know somebody was thinking about something and was up or whatever, and. Uh, I'm up late, so I'm always checking shit. And uh, I, I could tell they'd put a lot of thought into that. And it's it's amazing, man. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Get yourself a new mattress. 36 months. Uh, also, no interest. That's still going on. Pay as you go program. Nobody has that on the internet. Um, so get on it if you do it. And thanks, Rich. That was awesome, man. Uh, next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Shabloin. Shabloinkers. Man, I, look, uh, Ken Murray hit me up. Um, I was talking about how everybody uses this for dieting. Okay. For strike force. Yeah, yeah. Because again, man, you know, if you're on keto or whatever diet you're no on, sugar. no sugar, no carbs, no sugars, and you crash, man, it's tough. You're, you're putting your body into shock, especially after the holidays where you're eating all that great food, and then boom, it's out of you, and you're looking for some energy throughout the day. This will, this just goes into any liquid you have, and you don't have to buy a can or anything else. It's cheap as shit. It's like ten bucks a pack for this this shit. Uh, Monster and that that stuff is like four dollars a can. Fuck all that, man. Um, this is great for you, man. It, it's uh, it's great for weight loss, um, and because it, it keeps you going through your workout and the rest of the day. That's, that's what I use it for, and I use it for the afternoon crash. I drink Black Rifle in the morning, Strike Force in the afternoon. It's my go to. Um, busy dude. So if you're busy out there and you're looking for something to help you out, uh, these flavors too spice up a water in case you're tired of drinking 58 glasses of water a day you know uh during these di- diet sitches Seriously. uh they got lemon orange original and grape grapes my favorites um and they got a 10 pack uh 40 pack in a 750 milliliter bottle go to strikeforceenergy.com use the promo code revolution for 20 percent off that's good every time and it ships everywhere in the entire world with those analytics that i was talking about earlier we have a lot of listeners in the middle east obviously uh who are serving australia um and england yeah. We have a lot in England, actually. Um, so I'm huge in England. I know you are. You're like a little Meghan Markle over I'm there. I'm skinny in England. Just <laughs> joking. Uh, go to Strike Force, man, and they'll, they'll ship it to you wherever you are in the country. Last but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you rock it! Oh, man. That was, no pause. No. But a longer you rike it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I do wreck it, James. Spicy? Yeah, I'm a spicy boy. Oh, you like a spicy boy? You a spicy boy. <laughs> don't know why. Straight razors. Still don't know why. Because you're smoother than an Asian when you shave with it. Yep. Best shaving products one. on the planet. If you're getting rid of your Gillette's because you hate it, uh, get, go to straightrazors.com. There's no bullshit there. It's just dude shit. Um, their aftershave is some of the best on the planet. That's Smolder. I use it, fuck, man, every goddamn day. I use all their products, man. Um, and if you're worried about using a straight razor, they got safety razors. Uh, but they, got, they got beard oils, mustache waxes, uh, shampoos, conditioners, all of it. man. And when you buy it and you get it, you're like, holy shit, this is like a... Like old school bottling from like the the early 1900s or 1800s, like Tombstone. Like those guys make all that shit uh, in-house. Nicest shaving products on the planet. Go to straightrazors.com. Promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. And as always, when darkness falls, he doesn't catch it. And night she cries while he rides his steed or on sale everywhere. Hardbacks, paperbacks, audiobooks. Uh, Number one still. I'm going to keep saying it until we get knocked off. Number one audible book in the world. When darkness falls, he doesn't catch it. Crazy. Super stoked. Super stoked. That is, that is always continued. Um, speaking of airlines, by the way, uh, this, this just broke right here. American Airlines kicked a family off a plane citing body odor. No. Yeah. No. I, man, that is my dream, by the way. But the alligator or the, the cat? 
The uh, long-haired cat can come on. Cat person live. This is horrible. The stinky family, though, had to go. I, I, li- I like shit like this. Nothing bothers me more. I don't think in this life. I'll take the little tiny cowboy over a stinky person, like a, a yeah. stinky human. Um, out in a public, whole family. Yeah. What was the deal? You I had think? to go to the, I had to go to the DMV, which is you know obviously hell on earth. Um, sure. to, to return a license plate or whatever the fuck it was. I said a guy sat down next to me, and it was empty in there, like for a shock. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, I still had to take a number, even though it was empty in there. Right. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like right? I am legend. One guy walks in, sits down directly next to me. Right, stunk so goddamn bad, and I just turned it and I was like, why, why would you sit here? Mm-hmm. And I just got up and, and walked like as far away as I could and sat down in another seat. We are so different. I know. I, I you, would, you would put up with it and I just would live sit in it. Silently I can't do it. Next to him. Life is too short. And then I'd talk shit about him later. Can't do it. Like a normal person. Life is too short. Life is too short. Gosh, what I think the there deal? should be some form of body odor test, like a breathalyzer, where if you stink so bad that another human can't be around you, like there's got to be a sense. But what I, I'm, I'm just trying to picture. Got to be a scent breathalyzer where you can just family. swipe somebody, you know, like yeah. like a, one of those tags where it's mm-hmm. just like, hey, let me let me wipe you down, make sure there's no gunpowder or whatever the fuck on you. For a stinky human to be like, man, you register on the stinkometer. Sure, you were at a, a a nine out of ten stink, and a human shouldn't be next to you. You should right. you should honestly go home and shower. Look um, at us. We've, we're, it's like a Netflix special. We're, DMV jokes. No. The, the airplanes. I'll, no, t- I'll, I'll, I'll even add to it. Um, th- there, was an, there was a huge actor that uh, his, the agent told him to go shower. It was Adrian Grenier. I'll, I'll fucking out him. And I don't give a shit. And he always looked to me like he smelled. So we were, I was going to see my, because you have to go periodically visit your agent, go over scripts, all that other shit, auditions, sides. You also want to pop in, make sure they're doing their fucking job, that type of shit. put your face in their mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we were both up for the same movie long, long time ago. Um, Like maybe like 03, 04, somewhere in there, right? And I heard his agent say, hey man, before you go to this audition, you've got to shower. You've got to go home and take a shower. You stink. And I never heard that out of a man before, but I wished... We could say that to other people in real life all the time and just say, hey, you fucking stink. I mean, you That's absolutely mean. fucking stink. But do you think people just not know? Like, how do you not smell yourself? Yeah. I've caught myself once. Totally. Once where you're just that like, oh, shit, sick. after a long run. And I was like, ah, oh, man, or whatever. I forgot to. I got up that morning. I forgot to, you know, when I was in a rush, forgot to put deodorant on. I was like, oh, my God, that's me. I was right. so embarrassed. I sprinted to the shower. Yeah, you would think. I don't. I don't know. That's. A, I'm still. It's got to be a stinkometer. Yeah, no, There's got to be something where you so can that measure it's like these people. like across the board. Um, nobody gets their feelings really hurt. Yeah, it's a, it's a scientific thing. Yeah, you know, you you've registered on the stinkometer. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just a, an opinion that someone has of you. Oof. So it says Oy. several passengers along with crew members complained about the body odor and uh man the family was provided though hotel accommodations and meals and rebooked on on a, on a flight the next day they had a 19 month old god damn Do it man picture no they don't i wish no. they did because this, it's this either just came across the wire right now you know they're either hippies right i don't know man people are fucked like there's there's just some people who are fucked up where you're just like man i can't yeah. and they were on their way to detroit big shock Big shock. Rude. Hey, you know Detroit. Yeah, I do. Did you, do you still have a, a friend living there? Yeah. You do? Bought one of those $500 houses. Tell this story to the audience because I, I find it fascinating. Nobody believes this, by the way. What? That you can get houses in fucking like 3,000 square foot houses in Detroit for like five grand, 10 grand. $500. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's just whole... Well, we know Detroit just completely collapsed. So there's whole streets. You and I do, streets. but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's whole streets and neighborhoods that are just condemned houses, foreclosed. Just oh, it looks like fucking sit, eight mile. Sitting there. Yeah. And no one wants to even, the bank doesn't even want it because, or, you know, because you can't resell it or whatever. So they were doing this thing, I guess. My friend bought a big, like a two-story house in this horrible condemned neighborhood basically for $500 cash 
But the problem is every time you're trying to, you're trying to fix it up, right? you'll like put in floors or bring a fridge in, it gets stolen. So you're just, as you're trying to remodel, it just all gets like taken. I don't know if she still has it or if it was just like, fuck it, dude, I can't deal with this. Right. Copper pipes, like things are just getting stolen from the house. Yeah. Either whether you own it or not. And there's like big padlocks and all the shit you have to do. Um, so it, it, it's, it hasn't come up yet because of that. So it's just this, you know, but you lost 500 bucks, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a, you know, uh, yeah. the people <laughs> so who try, try it, it yeah. I, I just, why Listen, even put yourself I mean, in that situation? Because whatever, at a certain age, if you don't, you know, especially from LA, it's like, how else can you own a house? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Out there, it just seems so... When you live in LA, you're from there, you're still working there. It seems so out of the realm right. to own a house. You're like, how would I do it? So you just look at, you know, there's these places like... You know, Nashville used to be a place where it was like, yeah, you could grab a place for this much. It's gone up. And so you think that eventually Detroit will do that if enough people you know, enough kids, enough bartenders from somewhere else, like buy these houses and fix them up. Right. It's just going to take a really, really long time there. It's crazy. It's getting isn't it? knocked down. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's hard to fathom that, that, yes. that, like that, that it goes on in America. It does. And it's in a big city. Like this, Detroit's a, a big city. That's like right next to a totally fine neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you just think, why not? Why can't this happen it seems if like every other city has been able to expand and grow past it i remember it because uh again when i was at ohio state um downtown columbus was like that columbus is the capital of ohio big city and um it, it got to a certain point over the years where finally they just kept cleaning it up cleaning it up right. cleaning it up cleaning it up and now it's like fuck i you know you'd have to drive far outside the city to find a ghetto essentially at this point yeah, definitely. And when I mean ghetto, but it has to start. When somewhere. I mean ghetto, by the way, I mean yeah. like rundown houses, abandoned like that, houses, where it's like things like that. Yeah, yeah. You can't I, put a stove to do with... in your new house because it'll get stolen. That kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it was an initiative. So I think they're doing stuff like this to try and gentrify, but it's like it's just not working. No, no. You know? I, I, the weather there. I don't. I, living in Detroit, On top of that, Michigan as a whole. I, I've been to Michigan. <laughs> I don't know, 10 times maybe in my life, right? Sure. The only time I've been where it was relatively nice was a buddy of mine's got a house on, the, on some lake there. Well, his parents do, not him. Um, Erie? I, no, I, I, maybe. I don't know which lake it is. Uh, I don't know Michigan that well. And uh, like that was nice in that little area. Yeah. But I was like, what is this like in the winter? Mm. And they were like, it's fucking brutal. And I was like, I brutal, bet dude. you were right on the lake and all this other shit. And they were like, it is fucking yeah. terrible. And whenever we were watching uh, a catfish was on MTV, and whenever they go to Michigan. Yeah. It's always just, just like, like, oh, God. miserable. Everyone's yeah. miserable. Everyone's miserable there. Yeah. It's one of those states. Fishing. It's too close. That's where the catfish is always from. Yeah, it's not too close to Canada. That. When you're that close to Canada, it's, you're going to be miserable in life. You know, because the weather's going to be shitty. Yeah. You're just like, oh, God. Yeah. No real vegetation's going to be able to survive oh, up there. <laughs> Humans aren't, sp they're not supposed to. No, not at all. We force it, don't we? Yeah. We I don't really force our way into like situations only, we shouldn't be in. The only place that's up there that I've heard, and in everybody across the board, is Montana. Everybody still says Montana. That's probably where, you know, humans are supposed to live. <laughs> I asked him, I go, uh, I was doing an interview and, um, and I said, Hey, where are you from originally? He said, uh, Butte, Montana. And mm -hmm. I was like, Hey man, let me ask you, is Montana as beautiful as everybody says it is? And he goes, no, you don't want to live there. No, it's, it's awful. It's awful. And I go, what? And he goes, uh, I was like, are you lying? And he goes, yeah, that's what we tell everybody. Cause you don't want anybody to live there. It's that beautiful. And you're it. like, all right, I great. So Montana is great. Why not just move, slide on down the road to Montana from Michigan? I don't, I don't understand. Because Montana seems like they got their shit together up there. Mm -hmm. It seems like a gorgeous state. Every time you see it, you're like, ah, oh, man. No, but they have flint. I can see they myself retiring down there and making a little life of my, making a little nape of my new. Sure. Yeah. Mich no, Michigan's got flint. Yeah. Montana doesn't have any of that shit. No, I know. Yeah. They got bears. I Michigan mean, has everything. Might get killed by a bear. That's about Detroit, it. Detroit, flint. Yeah. <laughs>
Killing it. You've got a cornucopia of East well, Lansing. They have, um, they have Tim Allen doing the Visit Michigan ad. Is he a Michigan guy? I think so. Uh, yeah, that makes uh, sense. Ugh. Uh, Ugh. And he's like duping people into going and taking a vacation yeah, there. Envisioning. Been good. His show is killing, by the way, on Fox. Last Man Standing yeah, is destroying in the ratings. Yeah, I bet. Do you have a crime corner? I do. Come on, man. Come on. Crime corner. Crime corner. Crime corner. So if they so they found my mom in Walmart. They found my illegitimate sister at Waffle House. Where at? What state was this? Do you want to guess or should I just? Is it? Florida. Ah, so she was yep. dancing naked outside the Waffle House, but it didn't end there. Mm. This is brought to us by Detective Tim Morris. Oh. Personal message. Chicago Precinct. And Chaz Belfield. They worked on it together. Okay. I needed sure, sure, two sure. detectives on the case. Yeah. Um, so things got a little out of control outside of Waffle House in uh, Florida. Um, according to police, this lady named Freedom Zobris. Ah, you don't do, say. Why does that sound so familiar? Let freedom ring. Probably because we're related. <laughs> And uh, so she was causing a lot of problems inside the Waffle House. Let's just set the scene really quick. Yeah. Causing a lot of problems in there. Clearly some kind of drugs involved. Sure. My only thing is I'm pissed I wasn't witnessing this. Okay. You know, so she's causing a lot of problems out there. They're uh, calling the cops. She goes outside and pulls down her pants, starts dancing and like stopping cars naked right. outside the waffle house um and the police come she she grabs the police officer and licks both sides of his face mm. just just a real free spirit yeah 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 freedom zobris ah if you will sure so um my my only thing with she you know she's uh she was Arrested for disorderly conduct and battery and assault and um, being held on five thousand dollars bail. So yeah, well, that's gonna happen. I'm just bummed. I wasn't. Gosh, how fun would that be if you're you know because the w- Waffle House have those big windows. Yeah, yeah, and you, get you to could see just all of it. see the whole the, thing going down, I, threatening to kill people yeah. naked. Yep. The the here's where I'll disagree with you on this one. On which. It's uh, people on meth. It's never fun. It's not that one's no, not well, a fun drug. Well, they don't know if she was. Well, but I'm saying from the picture, which I'll put up from the actions. Yeah, probably not sober. Sure, but but meth. Could you tell what form of drug? Because usually when I see people like this, I can tell you what guys form tell of me. drug. Probably. I'm, I'm going to say meth. Probably. I'm going meth is never the fun one where it's Mm-mm. like drunk. Great. Hi, you bet. Uh, if you're on sure. some uh, hallucinogen, sure, even better, right? Uh, like like that, I can understand. I get down on. I prescribe to it. Mm-hmm. The meth one, you're always just like, oh no, that's not that's not the crazy I'm looking no. for tonight. It's no, not. you're right. You're right. You're right. It's not um, entertaining though. Yeah, uh, from it, afar, from a window. I liked it, uh, Tim. Boots on the ground. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Good stuff. Yanked her pants down. Yanked day. her pants all Exposing the way down. Exposing her sexual organs. Yeah, you exposed, you exposed yourself in the show. Uh, proud of you guys. You, uh, you're you really doing your job. Good job, guys. Really doing your job. Um, and if you're at home, take some hallucinogens and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Ross Patterson Revolution, and you can watch this show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can see Jable's smiling face and some kind of uh, fruit nut snack. Wholesome medley. Yeah, wholesome medley snack. Uh, do the damn thing. I'm not doing a revolutionary figure of the day today. If the government's in shutdown, so are so we. So are we. So are we. 
So we're not stoked about it. We're not stoked that this is happening to our government this may workers. Be, this may cause some more change yeah. than the other. Yeah. If so we're you not, don't get the revolutionary no. figure, people will rise up. We're not doing it. We're not doing it today. Um, you, you don't deserve it. Neither the left or the right. Because you won't come together. Therefore, you get no revolutionary figure out of me. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.